gamers, I'm Jason, and today on Dice and Dragons, we are going to be doing our in-depth look at Terminator Genesis Rise of the Resistance. Now, what does that mean? First of all, we're going to start out with an in-depth look at all of the components right here. We are then going to teach you how to set up the game and go through a how to play slash playthrough of the first mission. Now, let's start taking a look at these components. You'll start with the two books that you get. This is the mission book, as you can see. It is all about the fiction and has all of the information that you would need to set up the game. Now we'll take a look at that when we look at the first mission. Here, we then have the rule book. And as always, like there is a quick reference guide on the back of the rule book. And for those that want to see a little bit inside, we've got a nice component overview and some very good explanations as to how to play the game. Now, one thing I do want to say, for those of you that have not yet seen our review, we definitely did enjoy going through the rulebook and learning the game. It is very well put together. Now that we've taken a look at those components, let's start moving through everything that I've got in front of me. So we'll start with the heroes. Now we've got four heroes, Alex the Hacker, and for those of you that have seen the movie will recognize that Alex is in fact uh, the character played by Matt Smith that is uh, Skynet. You've got Kyle Reese, and you notice that uh, he's the assault team leader. You've got the Guardian, Arnold's character, a reprogrammed Terminator, and John Connor, the Resistance Commander. You notice that each of them has their own special ability. Well, not just one special ability. This whole side of the board is unique to each player. And then there is their fist ability, which you'll be able to use in certain situations. You'll notice that some are for defense in blue and offense in red. Now, each character has their own miniature. There is then also a colored ready token, which you'll then flip over when you're done to symbolize that the character has played. That will go at this part of the board. And then their grenade token to show you where they put their grenade. There is also four dice, and these are the dice you're gonna be rolling and assigning to different areas of your board, including these special areas right here. And then a colored base to associate the different enemies with your character. Now the colors I've just selected randomly. It's kind of the way I like to uh, set up the characters, but you can use blue with Kyle, red with Alex. It doesn't matter. There is nothing that is specifically set up. Here is where you will place your damage tokens, and this is for your rank token. Now rank tokens let you re-roll some of your dice. So these are definitely an important aspect of the game. Now, also for our heroes, we have this nice reference card right here. You won't be able to see it too far up close, but it gives you a nice breakdown of the different actions you can take, as well as the turn sequence. Now we've taken a look at the hero boards, showing you who the heroes are. Let's take a look at some of the other things that uh, you're gonna be using with the heroes, such as their cards and equipment. Now. Here we've got, well, I neglected this, so let's start with this. These are the damage tokens. As you can see, they would go here. Once a hero has reached three wounds, they are then down, but they're not out of the fight. Another hero can revive them using the rest action. All right, we covered those. Probably should have done that before. Let's take a look at the other cards we have associated with the heroes. We have the weapon cards here, and I'll flip over some of them. So this is a plasma assault rifle. It is listed at level S, meaning it is starting equipment. These aren't gonna stay in the weapon deck. They will only be with your characters when you first start the game, depending on the mission that you're playing. You will also see ones that have other levels like this plasma rifle. This is the Mark III, it is a level two. So it is a stronger version of the plasma rifle. Now, as you go through the game, you will be getting better weapons. And now, in terms of equipment, you might pull something that is very nice here, like high-end weapon, which means you will search through the weapon deck for a level 3 weapon. That is pretty good. You may find some heavy armor. 
which is extra wound slots for your character. The, as far as I know, these cannot be repaired, and once they're expended, this armor is done. You may also find some grenades, and you'll have to assign a dice to the grenade to use it, and then this will explain how you use the grenade. There's also the code breaker chip here, which means on your turn, discard this card to change one of your action die to any value, meaning you can change one of these action dice here to a different value. And then the last set of cards we're gonna see for our heroes are the class cards. Now, as you level up, you know, succeed at missions, you will get different classes. This one, for example, gives you an extra movement space. And what this says is, when using move action spaces, you may move through hexes occupied by enemies, meaning you can go through enemies, it's not gonna slow you down or you won't take any damage. And then this is a special ability, and it means if you're in cover, enemies within six hexes roll, sorry, they misread that. If you're within cover and there are no enemies within six hexes, roll one fewer of the reinforcement roll dice. Now those are these two black die right here. I will just explain them now because we're talking about them. You roll this to determine where the enemies are going to spawn. Now, that's why they're in here. They are associated with the enemies. I've taken a look at the cards and the different, uh, some of the different equipment that your heroes will be able to acquire throughout the game. Let's take a look at the last thing we've got close to me, the reference card. There are five reference cards that we have here. You've got the blast door and supply crate ones. You notice that on the blast door one, it's double-sided, but it's both the same thing. With regards to the supply crate one, it also gives you the instructions of how to interact with computer terminals. You'll see those right here. We'll just reference these tokens at the same time. So this is the blast door token. It is double-sided. And that's why I've got the cover token right here to show you that these are the same thing. Now, much like the supply crate, which if you're standing on represents one cover, it is also double-sided with a computer terminal on the other side, as you can see. And then if you interact with a supply crate, that's how you're gonna get some more equipment. Now, the other reference cards we have here are for the truck. And you'll notice there are two trucks. These are things that your heroes can drive, you know, potentially shoot and drive. And these are the instructions of what you can do. If you're in the driver's seat, if you're in the gutter seat, and then if you're in a passenger seat. Now, let's put our heroes back with their respective hero boards. And we're then gonna move on to the enemies. Now, what we have right here are the three base enemies in the game, the T-800, the T-72 platform, and the HK-8 hunter killer drone. Well, that's why it's an HK. What you can see on the card is the defense value. So how many hits you need to deal to deal one damage. All the base enemies only take one damage. The movement value, their attack value, how many attack dice they roll, their range, and if they have a special ability that will trigger when you roll attack dice on your attack phase, this is their defensive ability, and it can only trigger one time. So you notice that for the base enemies, the T-800 and the HK-8 have that Terminator symbol. There is none for the T-72 platform. We next have the boss enemies that make up this space right here. We've already talked about the reinforcement dice. Let's take a quick look at the attack dice. You're gonna be using the same dice for heroes and villains. For heroes, this will trigger the relentless ability. Well, on the T-800 or whatever the ability is, you'll notice that uh, for the T-1000 is called Blade. This symbol represents hits when you are attacking, so attacking yourself, playing as the enemies. Hits for the heroes are represented by these icons, the explosions. And then you've got the fist, which means that a hero may use their special ability, and it'll depend on whether they are attacking or defending. Now with regards to the T-1000, you'll notice it has the same stats as the regular enemies. There is nothing listed for defense because it's a T-1000, you can't really defeat it normally. It's movement, it's attack, it's range, it's ability, 
Then it has a knockback ability as well. And every boss has a miniature. Then they have their special logic card, which will explain how they interact and how you'll be using them. And then with the T-1000, you have a special stagger card. Then we've got the two T-800 command, well, two special T-800s. This is the T-800 flamethrower. Once again, similar setup, has its own logic card. We also then have the T-800 commander with its own logic, logic card. We then have also the enemy surge card right here. Now, we haven't gone far enough into the game yet to have used the enemy surge, but I want to make sure that you saw it and knew that it is a part of the game. Now, these are tokens that you can use for the truck damage track, which I should have talked about when we had the truck. And then this is for the enemy surge track. You also use the same token on the T-1000 stagger track. Now, once the truck is destroyed, well, you can't use it anymore, and you just follow the rules to apply damage to the truck. So we've covered the enemies, circled around a little bit on the truck. Now there is only really two things left for me to cover. There are the allies that you will be getting uh, in the game on certain missions, and then the tiles that we're gonna be using for the board itself. Now, this is a resistance soldier. You'll notice that he has his own card. You will need to spend a dice to trigger him. The value that you need to spend is listed right there on his card. And then it will let you do two actions. And these are the actions that he may do. You also have his movement, range, and attack value. Now, the other thing that we have are the four different types of tiles. You'll notice that there are small tiles, vertical tiles, large tiles, and horizontal tiles. And we've done it, we've covered all the components, or so I thought I just looked down and realized I did not talk about the enemy entrance tokens that you're gonna be using, as well as the waypoint token. So let's cover that before we move on to setting up our playthrough. Now we've got the enemy entrance tokens here. You'll notice that they, there is the waypoint tokens that they do tend to correspond to. That's been my experience so far in the game. Once you reveal a waypoint such as Echo, you would then also flip the enemy entrance token over to its heavy side. The way that it works is that whenever you roll the reinforcement dice here, if you roll a five, two, or three in this case right here, you would spawn an enemy at that entrance. Entrances may be applied like this, depending on the mission. And then once you've discovered one of these waypoints and something good or bad has happened, you'll typically flip the enemy entrance over, meaning that now on a five or a six, you will spawn enemies at the echo entrance. And there you have it guys, we've done it. So we are going to jump in the time machine, go ahead to the future, and we are gonna set up the first mission of Terminator Genesis, Rise of the Resistance. So keep it right here. Now we're going to set up Terminator Genesis, Rise of the Resistance. Now, in order to do that, we will open the book. We get our Mission 1 Gathering Supplies flavor text. We get the map set up here, the tiles we need, all of the different tokens that we're going to need. I've already got all of that set up. You can see here what our objectives are going to be. So in this case, it's locate and pick up all three supplies, which represent sorry, which are represented by these different waypoint tokens. Now there are some extra ones. We get our campaign reward information here. And in order to win the game, all characters are in the truck and we can enter from either of the half marked hexes. Now, as I'm doing a solo playthrough, that means we're gonna be using two enemy pools. We're gonna be using the red and the blue enemy pools. I've already pre-based the enemies and got them all set up. Here's the information as to the waypoints that we need and the cards that are gonna be used. So we use equipment deck level one, weapon deck level one, and these are the reference cards that we're gonna be using. As you can see for the truck, there is only the passenger seat. No one's gonna be driving or blowing stuff up. Now, as you can see, it's a big map, and I don't believe I can fit all of it on camera. I believe that the alpha entry point will be off camera a little bit, so I'll do something to make sure you guys know where it is. And when it comes to these entry points, I recommend that you just look at the numbers instead of trying to figure out if that's Alpha, Bravo, Echo, whatever. It's too hard to read. 
and some Mission One special rules are on the other side of the page. So you'll know what those different waypoints are. Now with that being said, I'm going to put this off to the side and we will start placing the tiles. Now, if anything does end up off camera, I will readjust it, but you can see what I'm going for in terms of setting everything up. Now, we're going to start by placing out our first tile. We then, and that is L5B, which is then linked up with L3B right here. We are then going to place L2B, which will link up right here. We have L4B, which is going to go up in the corner. Before that, we get our H2B up here. And then we've got S, wait, no, sorry, S4B goes down here, and it's our entrance. We have S1. B here, S to B here with L or B linking up to these ones. Now, I'm just going to take a second here, guys. I'm going to check the camera. I want to see how this is all looking and I will slightly reposition it. I apologize for any noise you might be hearing right now as I am getting up here. All right, so everything is looking pretty good. We have just a slight cutoff, it looks like. And I was standing up to look at the overhead, so there was a slight cutoff, but uh, we'll, we'll work with it anyway. Now, I'm gonna place the spawn points. So alpha one is going to go here. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna leave it here so it stays on the board and visible. We've got Echo, which will be going right here. Now, if it's off camera, we'll slide everything or I'll also place it. Actually, I'll just place it like this for now. I'll double check and see. And for sure, we've got Charlie that's going to go right here and we won't have any issues. Now, just as it was depicted in the mission book, you're going to take out the enemies. As you can see, I've pre-based them so we know on which player's turn they're going to be acting. And we're going to have a total of 12 enemies, six of each color that we can potentially be facing. Now, and why do I say potential? It is because it will depend on our roles and the spawns. We'll also get our two heroes. We're going to place them together at the front here. We want them in the same zone. Now, you notice that these glowing symbols are zones. It's much more important. As we go into the how to play, I will make sure to explain it. We've got the information for our enemies, which I will place right here. And we will also then grab the reinforcement dice and attack dice and get these placed here as well. Now I'm going to have to set up my second camera after I finish the setup. And that's where we'll finish setting up the heroes. Now what we need to do is get all the rest of the stuff set up as well. So let's grab our tokens and we'll follow what's in the mission book. But I believe I know where most of the stuff is. So I'm going to try to do it without the mission book. I've had a lot of practice. That is where the blast door is going to be. We have a barricade here, followed by a piece of cover here. Now we're going to get the truck and get that out on the board, which is going to be going here. Just uh, I will locate it in a second after I get all these other things set up. I believe we have, I'm trying to do it from memory, it's not the easiest, but I will double check everything. It's just, uh, I'm just doing this for fun really guys. So we've got that there, I believe we have a supply crate here. And of cover here. I know there was a supply crate here. And we also have a piece of cover just back here. And I think that's all I can remember. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the mission book, see if I got a lot of the stuff right. 
So the barricade up, nope. Hover should be further up here. It's not a supply crate, it's a waypoint there. And the supply crate is here. We will get the rubble that we need to symbolize the destroyed doors in these two locations. We need, <clears throat> now it's just under the book, I'll move it. See, some cover and supply crate right there. Now the type that you put out actually, it, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's really just for flavor. We need a few more supply crates along these wires. Another piece of cover by the door. And that is everything, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, there's another dual cover, which will go right there. Now we've gotten all of that stuff set up. We'll get the truck placed, and we're going to start placing the waypoints, which have a particular way that they need to be placed. So I'll move this off camera again. We've got the truck, and you can enter the truck from these two locations here. We now have the five waypoints and what we need to do actually is we need to flip them over and mix them up because some of them are going to be good, some of them are going to be bad and we really don't want to know where the supplies are. You can find out uh, in the book on the second page so no peeking guys. Well, I recommend no peeking. It'll make the game uh, a little too easy. I've got just about all of the waypoints set up. I believe that's where they all go. Let's quickly check the mission book one last time. One, two, three, four, and five. All the waypoints are set up. We are good to go. We've gotten this entire board set up, guys. So I'm going to jump in the time machine. We're going to jump to the future where we're going to be setting up the characters and going right into our playthrough of the game. So keep it right here, and we'll be back in a flash. And I'm going to read Mission 1, Gathering Supplies, the first story in our playthrough of Terminator Genesis. For those astute viewers, will notice that I'm actually doing this after the fact. I'm doing this after we flipped Alpha to the heavy side, but I'm going to be inserting it earlier on in the video. So let's read this story. It all comes down to the next few hours. John Connor fixed each of us with his dark brown eyes, making sure we all took his words to heart. Everything we fought for, bled for, and died for is all on the line. Everyone who gave whatever they could, including themselves, now it's time to make sure those sacrifices weren't in vain. It all comes down to the Colorado team and us. And then, just as quick, he grinned. No pressure, huh? That's John. Fearless, determined leader, one moment, yet somehow able to set his soldiers at ease in the nets. The three of us smiled back. Kyle's grin faded as quickly as it appeared. The Guardian, the first reprogrammed T-800 we took from Skynet, smiled too. A creepy grin stretching across its face like a death's head. Damn thing gave me the creeps. Always had. The mood lightened in the back of the Johnson cargo truck, but only a little. For John was right, the next few hours would determine whether the Resistance lives and Skynet dies. After Judgment Day, the remains of humanity were left scratching out a bare existence in the steel, mud, and bones of the nuked world. We almost didn't make it until John rose. Sorry? Until John rose up and brought us with him. He showed us that it wasn't over. That as long as even one of us still drew breath, we could fight the machines. That exa that's exactly what we've done for I don't know how many years now. And John has been there every step along the way. It's not, that, it's not that we would follow him into hell. We're already living there. But his unstoppable spirit has often been the reason we still fight today. And now we're on the brink of doing what many thought was impossible. The Resistance was on a mission to stamp out Skynet once and for all. That's not our mission, however. Today John is leading us somewhere else. A remote work camp where the machines take captured humans to work until they die. There's something important about the camp. John knows what it is, but he's kept it to himself. It must be something big. But to take us all the way out to the new caught desert instead of backing up the Colorado team. But first, we're making a stop along the way. Unlike the machines, 
Unlike the T-800 riding with us, humans need food and weapons. We need clothes and shelter. The Endos can come at us all day and all night, 24-7. We need supplies to live. We need supplies to fight. Scavenging is the second thing people learn out here. Killing the machines is the first. The truck stops at what looks like the remains of a military base. Gunmetal gray steel bunkers. Pitted and scoured from de decades worth of harsh weather. Rise from the ground. Sand dunes taller than me are piled up near the main entrance. John sent the guardian to scout ahead. With a shriek of protesting metal, a blast door was wrenched open. Weapons at the ready. We cautiously entered. And that's the setup for the game. So I'm going to cut right now and we're going to come back with the beginning of our playthrough. Now we're just going to finish setting up our heroes and then we're going to get into how to play in our playthrough of Terminator Genesis. What I've done is I have placed the starting weapon and starting equipment for each hero out. You can see that at the top part of their hero card. What we then need to do is just identify the color that they're going to be, get the ready token, and take the grenade. I'm just going to put it up here. Each player starts with one rank token. Now this will let us reroll some of our dice. We'll get John Connor's ready token and grenade set up. You'll notice that we only have six wounds. because That's what we, uh, it's the max that we can get total. We've got the reference cards that we need. We've got the weapon, we've got the equipment, and we are now ready to play the game. So as you can see, setting up the heroes is easily, sorry, is easy. Just to let you know, guys, if you do see some refocusing on this camera, I left it on autofocus in case I am going to show you guys, you know, closer look at their hero boards, but I'm gonna do my best. Now, we're back over here on our other camera. As you can see, the board is set up. I've made some small adjustments. I do apologize that you've got some stuff that is cut off and shouldn't affect gameplay. I'm gonna just move the alpha fully on the board for now. Once we start getting guys spawning, I will move it and maybe in post I'll be able to add a little something to the game board. But we are ready to start. Now our objective is for our two heroes to find their supplies. And to do that, we're gonna to need to start by rolling dice. So we're gonna move over to our hero cam and we're going to start by rolling the dice. Now I have set up one action card here so that you can see exactly what you can do. This explains the actions, I'll go through it. And this side has the turn sequence. So the first thing we gotta do is the decision phase. So we choose someone to start first. Now, we're gonna start with John Connor because his special ability up here means that another player that is in the same zone, which means any of these blue zones here, can use one of his dice. And as we don't have a lot to do, it makes the most sense. What I'll do for the moment is move the red dice just out of the way, and we'll start by rolling the blue dice. Got a total, not some interesting stuff. And what we want to do is try to get to one of these waypoints over here. We want to stick together. If we can potentially interact with a supply crate later on, that's going to be very good as well. Now, first things first, we want to move. So with regards to John, we're going to spend maybe not the seven, but definitely the three on the movement. Now, moving back over here, John is going to move three axes. One, two, three. We want to get in this zone, and I'll explain it because uh, we'll definitely want to interact with the supply crate. And we'll come over the camera. You notice that to interact with the supply crate, you need to have either rolled a four, five, or a six. That means that this four right here is great to save because we can give it to the guardian. We're going to want to move another three. And we'll move John one, two, and just so you guys know, actually, we were, um, we started here, one, two, three. We're actually going to move John into uh, cover, which will take two movements, so he's going to lose a movement point. And that's going to be John's turn. We're going back to our other camera now. This one is going to essentially end up wasted. There's really nothing that we can do with it. And... 
There is also a special ability that John has with an extra rank token. I'm gonna add that uh, when we get to the second turn, but as we did not need to roll any of our dice, I'm just gonna move this rank token here to remind ourselves that it's in play. And this die could essentially be a rest, anything like that. There's nothing else that we can do with it. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to our board cam, and we're gonna roll the reinforcement dice. We're gonna roll both die, and then we rolled a six and a five. As Echo, Charlie, and Alpha don't co only correspond to the five, the six does not trigger, it's the five that triggers, meaning our Terminator now enters into play. What we then do is we're going to take a look at the T-800. I'm going to just move this up closer. And you can see defense value of 3, movement of 4, range of 6, and attack of 3. Essentially the T-800 is going to move to try to get within range 6 of John Connor. He cannot go through the truck. He's going to move 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, there is no one within line of sight of the T-800, so that is going to be the end of John Connor's turn. We need to just slide these enemies up as they will then enter the fray at a later time. Now, we're going to move over. It is now the Guardian's turn. We're going to roll the dice, and not the best, but we want to get to that crate if possible. We're definitely spending our five on movement. Moving back over here. We're gonna move one, two, three, four, five. So we want to get to the supply crate. We will spend our one on movement. Puts us right next to the supply crate. We're now going to interact with the supply crate. To do that, we are going to take John Connor's dice using a special ability and place that on our interact space. What we then do, and you can read it right here, we remove the supply crate from the map, we draw true equipment cards and immediately give them to any characters in your zone, including yourself. If those characters don't have available slots, they may immediately exchange cards with new ones, discard the excess cards. Now that was why it's so important that John and the Guardian are in the same zone. We're going to now take this, and I'm just discarding it. We're going to move back over and draw the top two equipment cards. And what we get is a grenade. And we also get a weapon. I'm going to move these over because we're going to need the space. The T-800 has got some better defending uh, abilities, might be the one rushing into combat. We're going to give John the grenade. We'll then take the weapon and goes immediately to discard this card to draw a card from the weapon deck. We're just going to discard that, draw a card from the weapon deck, and we get another plasma shotgun, which is a better gun than what he has, but it gives us more attack capabilities. And for the moment, we're gonna we're gonna do that. We can always trade using an interact action. And right now, there's really nothing else that we can do with these dice. So we're gonna move over to our board cam, and it is time to spawn enemies. We roll a four and a six, meaning luckily enough for our heroes, we do not have any enemies that spawn. Now we're gonna go back to the siding phase. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut right here. That is the end of our first turn of our playthrough, and we're going to keep going uh, through this game. Keep it right here. We'll be back in a flash. And we are back with turn two, and we are now going into the deciding phase, and you'll notice that I did grab John Connor's extra rank token that we needed. We reset the dice, and one thing that I neglected to do, and uh, it's not that big of a deal, you should flip the ready tokens over to done. And then at the start of the turn, you flip them back over to ready. I always get these upside down for some reason. Oh, 
worked out well that time. Now the one thing we do know is that we do have a terminator that is active on our board. And he will add during John's turn. So if John goes first, that terminator will be moving. And let's go over to the board cam and just get an idea. He does move one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. So he's not quite in range, which is a good thing. That means we're still okay to act with John first. If he was in range, we might decide to act with the Guardian first, maybe take out the T-800, but the goal is really gonna to be to complete our objectives. Let's roll the dice, and I'm gonna leave that because that's just a really good roll. We're gonna definitely save the six for later on, as we're not gonna be attacking this turn. We're gonna spend our six on movement. So we will take a second. Go over to the board, John moves. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're now going to interact with the waypoint, which is going to be our other six. So we'll flip over the waypoint and it is alpha. Now, what we need to do is grab the mission book, open up the mission book, and see what happens with Alpha. Now what I'm actually going to do, I'm, no, I'm going to read this, I'll actually add something in after the fact. For those of you that might have skipped ahead, it'll be there. I will read the uh, Mission 1 Gathering Supplies overview and add that in. So for Alpha. The base looked like it had seen hard fighting. Plasma burn scorched the walls, heaviest near entry points. Clusters of bones lay among bits of melted metal from dust and machines. Whoever had defended this place, they made Skynet pay dearly in taking it. Could be there wasn't anything left inside, but the opportunity was too good to pass up. It also didn't mean the place was empty either. Everyone had their fingers on triggers as we headed deeper in. This waypoint token represents supplies to be gathered. Flip enemy entrance alpha over to the heavy side. Now, we're just going to take that and... Whip back off camera. Alpha is going to be on the heavy side now, meaning it will trigger on one and two. We'll go back over to what we can do with John. There's not much else that we can do with this two besides move. We'll spend it on the move action, moving John to closer. We'll pick up the alpha token. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to place them here. A little bit more space and keeps them out of the way. It is now the reinforcement phase. I'm going to roll up the dice, see what happens, and we get a one and a four. Now the four will not trigger, but we do get a spawn at alpha, which is going to be the HK drone. Now just for a second I'm going to slide alpha off because as you can see over at Echo, these hexes are actually part of the board, just so I know where the HK is starting. And you will see that its movement is 8. So we'll move it 8. Now it cannot go through the door, so it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that will be its turn. We'll slide alpha back, just so it remembers where it is. And we've now completed John Connor's turn. Let's go over to the Guardian. I'm going to roll up our dice. Not the best roll. We definitely want to move. And if you're wondering why I'm sticking together, is I have some bad experiences when I have not stuck together in this game. Oh, sorry guys. I'm coming back over to the board here. We're going to do the movement. But I did neglect to move the T-800, it would move 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now I could definitely move, attack, and move, providing support for John. Or I can just stay and go with him. Let's see, this T-800 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, he's 7 away. The range on my weapons is 4. 
I don't really have the best weapons to go engage. Let's not be brave. We're going to move one, two, three, four, five. Actually, you know what? Because here we're going to move one, two, three. And I dropped him. Four. We're going to move right up next to John Connor. Now, we're back over here on our second camp. I'm going to remove this three because I should have thought about this. I've got an extra die right here that is six movement, which is perfect. And in retrospect, moving four was not the best idea either. As we're doing a playthrough and how to play, let's just change this up. Meaning I'm only one away from John now, but I've used his die to get an extra six movement. I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I thought that would get me in range. I was really only off by one. It didn't quite work out the way I would have wanted. Unfortunately, we got the four, we can't interact. There's really not much else that I can do with these dice, unfortunately, this turn. Now, we've left a lot of Terminators and I left a lot of dice on the board, something that I don't really like, but it's probably for the best. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Let's move back over to our board and check it out. We rolled two fours. That's probably the best roll that I could get. And no Terminators once again spawn on the Guardian's turn. Now, we'll cut right here and we'll come back with turn three. I don't know if I'm going to cut during each and every one of our uh, turns, but it does make editing just a little bit easier. So keep it right here and we'll be back in a flash. And we're back with our deciding phase. Gonna clean up the dice. I neglected to flip everything over to done. It's really not that big of a deal. And we're gonna move over to the board quickly. We're gonna look at our board position. It's not so bad once again if John starts. And there's a potential to get a waypoint and even interact with the supply crate. We've got some good stuff, but you know what? When I look at stuff like this, I might want to get rid of this plasma shotgun or the plasma assault rifle. And get because we're just going to get better weapons. Let's see what we roll. And that was just all around not good. I'm just going over here to count one, two, three, four, five. We're going to move five, one, two, three, four, five, just to be in the same zone as the Guardian. I'll give him a three to use potentially, and this two is gonna to go to waste. Move over to the board cam, and hopefully we don't roll a three. We roll a one and a two, meaning we're gonna get a double blue spawn here. Slide alpha up. And let's move everything. So as I don't forget, we're gonna start with the endo here. He is charging in. One, two, three, four. That's this guy moving eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's flying, so that's why he doesn't have to worry about the obstacles. This guy's moving one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We move these guys up. And that is the end of John's turn. Now, once there are no more blue Terminators, we will not have any more blue spawns. So let's go back over to the hero cam, as I'm going to start calling it, and let's roll out the dice. And before I forget, I'm just going to flip over John to done. I want to move two, so we're going to take this three and spend it on movement. Now to interact with the waypoint, it's four, five, or six, it's in the rule book. Fortunately, I can only interact with one thing. And you know what though? I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna interact with the supply crate. Draw two equipment tokens. We get another grenade. And we get another grenade. So I'm definitely going to discard one of these grenades. 
what I'm going to do is, don't really want this plasma shotgun because I've got a better one. We'll get rid of my starting weapon, and now we've got a grenade. That wasn't the best. John is in a position to, to interact with the waypoint next turn. We need to start splitting up just a little bit, not by much. We're going to move five, one, two, three, four, five just to get the Guardian moving towards the waypoint. Now, these other two dice are wasted. We've really been doing well. We haven't gotten into too much combat, actually, which is a good thing. But now we're gonna have to go ahead and roll the spawn. Hopefully we don't get a three. A five and a four. Finally, the Guardian spawns something. We just get an endoskeleton that comes in here. And he's gonna move forward. One, two, three and four. He's moving this way because he's going to go the shortest path, which would potentially be up here. As our characters are here, I'm having him move along a diagonal towards him. Now, instead of cutting, I'm going to just continue on and uh, I'll probably decide when I'm going to take a quick break. Let's flip over the Guardian to done, just to remind ourselves that we now need to go back into our decision phase, which is when we're going to pick who goes first. And it's fairly important this time. I might have actually made a mistake with my movement on the Terminator. Because if John goes first, this HK drone is going to get there. We don't have to worry about the end of it, but it's only one HK drone. We might actually move into range of the Terminator, which wouldn't necessarily be bad. So we'll continue what I was doing. We're going to have John go first. Flip them back over to ready. All right, not the best movement. That almost made me want to re-roll, but all right, we're going to move two. We just move one. We're going to spend our five on our interact. Let's see what we get over here. It is Bravo. I will grab the mission book and we will read what happens with Bravo. We had just gained entrance to what the faded crumbling map said was a cafeteria, whatever that was. Dusty broken tables and chairs were scattered across the room with dark stains in several places on the floor. Looked like someone had tried to hold out here and lost. While clearing it, we heard a familiar noise, a steady plodding steps of titanium feet. As we scrambled for cover, red eyes glowed in the nearby darkness, the machines had found us. So we must replace the waypoint token with the next two enemies of your color in the enemy pool. One must be placed in the same match as the waypoint token, the second one next to it. No, that's not fun. But at least all of John's enemies have now been spawned. And we're going to get to see some combat. So I'm going to move over to the plasma assault rifle. I'm going to pick up the card. You'll see the attack dice has a range of six, and you may re-roll one result if you use a five or a six. Now to keep things simple, as we've got multiple cameras, I'm gonna be just using both to attack. And what I'm gonna be attacking first is the HK8 drone. And we'll take a look at the drone. So if at least one of the terminators because it's rolled when defending, cancel one damage. Well, we'll cancel that one damage, but we still have the two damage equaling its defense and destroying the HK-8 drone. Not so bad. We then need to attack the T-800. Hopefully we'll get a nice roll. And oof, they got two skulls, but we have a fist. Or, and we'll see what that ability is. Now, when attacking, ignore one Terminator head result. Unfortunately, we can ignore one of them, but it does mean that he advances one and deals one damage to adjacent characters. Now, John will then take a damage. Now, I want to double check John's ability right here. With the rank token, once Piranha character in your zone ignores one rune, rip, flip this rank token to mark when it's been used. Well, you know what? It's a character which includes John. John is going to ignore the wound that he took. 
and we will continue like that. We're gonna flip John over to Tom, and yeah, now we've got a whole lot of stuff going on. We're gonna start with the simple stuff over here. We're gonna move our care, our HK, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna move this guy, one, two, three, four. And then move, we'll move this HK because he's gonna come in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Engaging the Guardian. One, two, three, and four is the endoskeleton. And this T800 is not going to move. Now, we are now, we are under attack by the Terminators. We'll start with the T800, which is an attack of three with a range of six. They're just going to roll the three dice. Hopefully it misses. And as there is no Terminator skull results, it misses entirely. That's good. The HK drone is going to attack the Guardian. And he scores one hit on the Guardian. No, that's not so bad. Let's roll our dice. We get a three. And we spawn this guy, and he also gets the axe, so we are actually in trouble. I probably should have rolled before, doesn't really matter. We're gonna attack Mr. Connor, and John Connor also takes a wound. All right, it is now the Guardian's turn. And it's gonna be time for us to get into combat. First and foremost, we're gonna roll the dice. Six and the five are definitely going to go to his weapon. So we're going to make these two attacks first. Well, we're going to let's leave it like this actually. No, keep the six. We might want to move. We're going to use the five. We're going to attack the HK drone. Now, before we go away, the plasma shotgun has an attack value of four. And unfortunately, they dodge one of the damage. But this is up, but we use the five. So we can ignore one result. Let's change it so we ignore one result. Yeah, they still dodge all of the damage, unfortunately. There's really not much else that we can do. Well, we're actually going to move four. So one, one, two, three. No, I can't do that. That doesn't work. We're going to have to try to attack again. And we did not get nearly enough to do anything. Well, this is a tight spot, and you know what? We're gonna use our rank token, flipping it over. We're gonna reroll all the dice. In that case, it works. We destroy the HK. Now, I'm not sure if that was a mistake. I'm gonna double check the rule book afterwards, but I did see an example that said that that was okay. But the Guardian no longer has his rank token. And uh, yeah, we are in uh, we are in deep here. So let's go back over to the Guardian. We're going to move four. One, two, three, and four. Then we're going to use this special ability. It says attack up to two adjacent enemies, roll three attack dice, and apply the result to both. So essentially I'm pummeling them with my fists. Hopefully I can clear the board here. Unfortunately, it does not work. Meaning the enemies would trigger and ignore one result, but I'm going to take a damage and we don't damage the HK drone. And that was our turn and it really was not a very good one. We we're actually in a situation where the playthrough could come to an end very quickly. I'm going to roll the spawn dice, and we get a six and a three. We get another endoskeleton. 
that comes out right here. We'll engage the guardian. Hopefully it will miss. It does not miss. And we take, going over the Eurocam, we take damage and the guardian is down. So while we were doing well, we had stuff that just did not go our way. And I think this is a good place for us to cut. So we'll cut right here and we'll come back with the next turn. And we're back. As you can see, the resistance is in a tough spot. We did neglect to move this endoskeleton four. One, two, three, four. So that just gets us cut up to this turn. And now we're gonna move over to our hero cam and let's see what we can do. Well, the guardian could actually start despite being down. The way being down works is you have to roll the dice and you can only use the ones that you get. You are not able to use anything other than a one. Now this means we could take a shot at one of the terminators around us, but it's not necessarily the best thing that we can do. What we really need to do is use John Connor and hopefully get our friend, the guardian, back on his feet. So let's roll the dice and see what we get. Wow, that's actually a very nice roll. And the first thing we're gonna do is take this six, and we're gonna try to destroy the endoskeleton that is sort of blocking our path to the guardian. Roll the dice. And we did get two hits, three hits. We have one Tornator symbol. Now he will potentially trigger his ability Relentless, but if I'm not mistaken, move over to the hero cam. When attacking, ignore one Terminator result. We bring it back over here. We will defeat this Endoskeleton. We do not need to take any damage because of the fist that we got, meaning that was a very successful start to our turn. Now the next thing that we're going to need to do is get rid of these two enemies here or at least one of them as this red guy is not going to trigger until John's turn. So I'm not quite sure what I want to do though but we're going to want to move and we're going to have to use a rest action. There's no way around it. Whether we use a five or a six, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna move one, two. I'm gonna pick up the guardian. With our rest action. Now, actually, you know what? I think I might just move the one, actually. Unfortunately, I can't quite get into cover. I don't want to necessarily be closer to these enemies. Leave it at that. Now we're back on our hero cam. We're going to discard the med pack, which lets us fully heal ourselves or another player. Go ahead and discard the three wounds because he is now fully healed. <clears throat> and we can make another attack. And we will attack the... HK. Hopefully we'll get killed and we totally get the shot and blow it away. Now the HK has been destroyed. We're in a better position but still not great. We need to roll our spawn dice. Come on to fours. A five and a two. That could be a lot worse. Now we're going to put the and the skeleton at the five. The HK at the two. I was just going to move eight, which would put it here. The endoskeleton will move four. One, two, three, and four. Slide this guy up. Let's move the guys that are going to attack us. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the endo will move one, two, three, and four. We'll start with the endo who only has a shot at the guardian. And that is two damage to the Guardian, but we can ignore one of the wounds using John Connor's ability, which is what I think we're actually going to... Actually, you know what? No, we're going to take both wounds. Makes the most sense for the moment. 
I think both wounds because of the Guardian's special rest ability. So we're going to try that. And the next thing that's going to happen is we will go back to our board. We'll roll the damage from the HK and it entirely misses. So we are still in this fight. We are in the game. Now, let's go over to the hero board. John Connor will be done. And we've still got this token that potentially blocks some damage. And let's roll our hero dice. Now, if we rest with a five or a six, ah, see, this is actually only for a downed character. I misread that. I thought it was when I rested. Well, actually, we'll go back and use John's ability to block one damage in that case. Now, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take this one as I've got two adjacent enemies near me, and let's see if we can get them both. And, well, I do take a damage because didn't get a fist. We got one Terminator ability. We do miss, so that didn't work out very well at all. I'm going to spend the two to rest. We're going to need to do that. We've got the six and the four. Now, as much as I want to get moving here, we've got to get rid of some of these enemies. I don't want to abandon John. We'll try first with the Rainbow Skeleton. And we still... A fist would have made him move up one and take a damage. We'd, that's from the last time. He moved back one, deal another damage. So two damage to me, but he does get defeated. And now we'll try attacking the airship. And the airship is actually able to draw to dodge two. Now if I'd done this differently, we'd actually be able to kill the uh, HK, but unfortunately, that was not the case. Well, we're at least in a better position. We shall roll the enemy spawn dice. We get a five and a four. It'd be far worse. Now, the HK is gonna show up and move H, sorry, eight, and the four did not spawn an enemy. Now. We're set up, we're good to go. We're gonna go back to our hero board here. We're just gonna get everything reset and then we will cut and come back with the decision phase as we try to figure out what we're gonna do in this situation. We're still in this, we're hanging on, but uh, as you can see guys, things aren't looking great. So keep it right here and we'll be back in a flash. We're back. Let's just get everything all nice and even here. And it's quite clear what we got to do. We got to take out these Terminators, give ourselves some breathing room to get to this waypoint and hopefully get through the door. And the best character that we have when we go look at the hero board to do that is the Guardian. And I think that's what we'll do. We'll have the Guardian start. First thing we're going to do is roll his dice. And was not the best roll. But first thing we need to do is rest, get rid of a wound here. We're gonna to try to take out this HK. And we'll start with that, rolling four dice. And luckily this time we actually do defeat the HK. That's good. Go back and do I wanna I wanna be able to move more. And he's not in danger of taking damage. We'll try with the three. Hopefully we'll get lucky here. And we, the endoskeleton will move up one, but he does take a lot of damage. He's now defeated. We'll go back to our hero board. We will place the five on movement, moving the guardian. One, two, three, four, five. And we're getting towards that next waypoint. Back on the hero camp. It is John Connor's turn. But before that, let's not forget, almost did. We got to spawn the enemies. We got a one and a two. Meaning both guys will spawn at the top. The HK will move eight, which should bring them right to here. The endo will come in and move four. One, two, three, four. Placing them there. Move these guys up. 
Move this HK drone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right here. And this endo will con continue with March one, two, three, and four. And there you have it. That's the situation that we're in. And actually, looking at this now, <clears throat> I do not believe that I actually rolled the enemy. No, I did. That's where we got the other guy and the other guy up there. Perfect. Nope. Thought I may missed something. We're good to go. If I missed something, guys, please let me know in the comments below. So we will go on to John Connor's turn. We got a lot of Terminators and uh, we got a, still uh, quite a few uh, supplies we need to find. We've only found one so far. And that is just an awful roll. But luckily we don't need to move very far. We're gonna use the twos and the ones. And this one, I can't really think of anything else to do with it. So this die is gonna get wasted. We'll go back over to our board here. We're gonna move one, two, three, and four. And before I forget, we will heal one wound. It is John's spawn phase. Come on, two fours. A one and a three. Both are HK drones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Place the HK in front of these guys. And eight, as I've come to know, is right there. We then will move the other, the other guys. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's move those who's behind. That's five, six, seven, sorry. Five, six, seven, eight. So we have the other HK. Now we need to roll the attack. And you know what? We're going to have him attack the Guardian with this roll because we get to ignore this one Terminator and we don't take any damage. Probably would have had him attack the Guardian anyway. And we've now done our lap. We've done this turn. We're going to move over to the hero board. Clean up the dice. And we're in a good situation to have John go first and potentially give the Guardian an extra die, even maybe heal him. Let's see what we get here. That's not too bad. We need to move one, two. So we'll need the two and the five at least for interacting. We can try to take out this HK, which I think is a good idea. Anything that we can take out now is... Uh, Gonna be a bonus. We can potentially save this six to help out. Uh, I'll probably be more for movement, but we'll see. So he dodges one, gets shot down, defeated the hunter killer. That was a good start to the turn. Now on the hero board, we need to move to interact the five, and then we're gonna. He's not going to be in the same zone as the... Well, he will be in the same zone as the Guardian, but he'll be left behind. We need to move. We can't get stuck again. So we'll go back over here. We'll do this first. One, two. Interact, which is Echo. I will grab the book. We will take a look at Echo. The mission has been a success so far. We found price and supplies that would be vital in our continuing fight. Although time was burning, grabbing everything we could was too important. We hauled our precious stores outside and hurried to the truck. When John pointed at a huge dust cloud on the horizon, heading straight for us, they're coming. This waypoint token represents supplies to be gathered. Flip enemy entrance Echo over to the heavy side. Now, unfortunately, Echo goes to the heavy side. We'll put this away. But we have gathered another set of supplies. I'm actually just going to move Bravo off camera as it's not one of the supplies. We need to get to one of these other two waypoint tokens and somehow survive. And John can still move six. So we're going to move one, two, three, four, five, and just get him up to those blast doors. Let's see what we spawn. We roll two twos, meaning everything is behind this door. It's not the best. To slide that up. One, two, three, four. It's getting crowded. 
And this hunter killer is still going to go around the corner because that is the shortest path to us right now. But where we need to go, we need to kind of go through all of that mess. Let's see what happens. Now we'll go over to the Guardian. Let's roll up the dice. That is just a baller roll, something that we really needed. Now the six is going to be for interact. That's what we need to open the door. We're going to use, let me just check our movement. One, two, three. So we can use the four for our movement right now. We will open up the blast door, removing the token. Now we need to check our range. One, two, three, four. Yo, we're not. We're not in the best spot range-wise. We're going to have a bunch of guys heading towards us. So we need to play smart here. We're going to use our five. And I might throw my... Actually, I might throw my grenade. Instead of moving. Stay back a little bit and potentially take out uh, a few endos. It's almost the same as uh, him as walking and then shooting, but it's uh, it's tricky what to do with the five right here. All right. Now you know what? We're gonna try throwing the grenade. We got to do something. We need to take some guys out. It means we can place our grenade token up to five away. We're gonna go here. Roll the dice, one damage each. We get rid of the endoskeleton, get rid of this other endoskeleton. And this other five is gonna be the rest because we just aren't in great shape and I'd much rather be safer than sorry. That's the end of the hero portion. Let's go ahead and we'll roll the dice. Two and a three. With the HK that comes in from behind, flies right in. I know that'll start here, and he's basically just going to move onto the board, and they're going to start shooting at us, two of these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this HK will come here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This HK will also come here. We'll get this token out of the way. And this guy was one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, five. So he does not have range, but all these guys will be attacking. We'll start with the HKs. Oh, well, two that are right next to the Guardian. So no hits. No hits. Well, the other one that's next to the Guardian attack. No hits. Doesn't matter which one is attacking. The endoskeleton that can have line of sight on John Connor gets a hit. And that is it. That could have gone far worse. So I'll just go over to our hero cam, put one damage on John. We'll go ahead and take the dice off. We'll get ready for a deciding stage again. And what I'm going to do is we've been going for a little while. So I'll cut and we'll be back with the following turn in a flash. And we're back. It's a tough situation. We'll put this back on the hero board. And we need to decide who's going to go first. And it's probably going to surprise you what my decision is going to be. We'll place the grenade token back. I'm actually probably going to have the Guardian go first. Because he's in the best position depending on his role. To either move out of the way to hit three of the HKs with his grenade. Or take out some of them with his adjacent uh, attacking ability. We'll start off with the roll. He also has his high explosive rounds. And you know what? With this six, two sixes, the four, and a one. I think that's going to be for the best. We're going to try attacking the HKs. And they go two adjacent ones. And they get the dodge. And you know what I was thinking about doing? I didn't do it. Let's go back and just take a look at the card. So at the start of your turn, discard this card. Each time you attack this turn, add one damage to your result. And looking at the situation you're in, I really should have discarded it. And I don't necessarily want to die during this playthrough so early on. We'll discard it and we'll apply an extra damage to two HKs, getting them off the board. 
I won't have my high explosive rounds anymore. Now, take a look. We definitely need to potentially move and attack. The HKs aren't as deadly as the endos, so we're going to move four. One, two, three, and four. It puts us in range of both of the endoskeletons. So we will use our sixes on the shotguns. Now, let's roll the dice and see what we get. Well, we get to ignore one result because of the six. We'll destroy the first endoskeleton. We'll be firing it up again. And this one does not work out well. It does move closer to us, but at least we've done a lot to clear the board. Now, we're going to need to roll for a spawn. Two twos. Absolute worst situation to be in. One, two. We'll just have a move here because the HK will just fly right at John Connor. We are surrounded and we get to roll for the attacks. We'll start with the HKs attacking John. No damage. And unfortunately, that does deal one damage to John Connor. Place that along the hero board. Now, the endoskeletons only a line of sight on the guardian. Let's see how things go. We get one damage on the guardian and no damage on the guardian. Now, that's not so bad. And let's go over here where I actually apply the damage to the guardian. But you know what? We're going to flip over John's ability and take this one damage off of him because he could have blocked the damage. So it is now John Connor's turn. We're not in the best situation, but maybe we can uh, blow some stuff up. So let's roll the dice, see what happens. So that's six, four, four, and one. Well, we're gonna definitely try to shoot at least one of these guys in front of us, so we'll start with that. And we get an extra damage, so even if he dodges, we kill an HK, we have a way through. We're gonna move four. Move one, two, three, and four. We're next to a supply crate, and I think we need some supplies. We'll use this six to interact. Let's see what we get. Hopefully it's good. We get another med kit. Fantastic. Put that on John. Then we get more high explosive rounds. So we've got those back. Again, I really didn't plan that. That's pretty funny. It leaves us with the one. Let's get this out of the way. And what do we want to do? Well, the only real thing we can do is rest or attack. And I don't think we're in danger of going down this turn, but killing anything that could attack us and give us more options is best. Try to get this HK drawn off our back, and nope, does not work. Probably should have healed in that case. And it is now John Connor's spawn phase. A four and a three. So luckily the four is still inactive. The three comes out here. He's not in, oops, sorry. So he comes out there. And he's not in range. Now, we've got to trigger everything else, though, and figure out sort of what is the shortest distance. We know he's moving eight. It's going to get him adjacent. These guys turn around going one, two, three, four. He goes one, two, three, four. He's going to keep going the way he's going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we got one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, at least we only have the one HK attacking, and he'll attack the Guardian, and he does get a hit on the Guardian. Now, we'll go over to our Hero Cam, place the hit on the Guardian, and you're good to go. We will reset our heroes. I know I never do the done thing, guys. It's I think it's more helpful for players when I'm running everything myself. It seems a little uh, ridiculous. We'll flip back over John's token and let's decide who's going to go first. Let's take a look at the board situation. Now, red is definitely going to attack us first. Blue is going to come surround us. It might be good to get uh, 
and get some good grenade kills off. But we do have a chance to potentially waste all of the red and some of the blue guys first. Hmm, it's going to be tricky, but I think we're going to have John Connor go first. Let's see what happens. We get that nice extra die. And not great. Sorry, this was a two. So we'll start placing a two on the attack. We're going to definitely attack twice. We might want to move with these four and the five. Now let's see what we're going to do. Go back over here, take our three dice. Let's take a shot at the HP in the back. It goes down. I'm going to shoot at the end of skeleton in front of us. It deals one damage. Well, it advances one and deals one damage. Which ended up being to John Connor, but we can block it. But we still dealt three damage to him, so he is destroyed. We've got reasonable control of the game again. Let's move these over here. We've got a five, a four and a five. And hmm. Don't necessarily want to use a met use a med kit right away, but let's hang on to it for now in case someone goes down. We'll use the four as a rest. Sorry, I moved too far. We'll heal up the Guardian. Now, we don't necessarily want to move. And we might want to have the Guardian to deal more damage. We're going to place the five up there, actually. We don't quite have line of sight. And they're not all adjacent, so we're not going to do that. We'll do what we did. It's a risk, but let's see what happens. Let's move our guys. One, two, three, four. He does have line of sight on John Connor. He goes one, two, three, four, five. He's going to go for the Guardian. One, two, three. Sorry. One, two, three, four. He has line of sight on the Guardian. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he actually will end up here blocking line of sight. They're quite surrounded here. This guy's going to move up. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to have a lot of attacks. We're going to start with the endo on Mr. Connor. Oof. John Connor takes two damage and is down. We're going to go over here. He is down, so we'll definitely need to get him back into the fight. we got three 800 killer drones on the Guardian. Two damage, actually, and... Unfortunately, with that, we have been defeated. Now, as you can see, we're in a tight spot. That was just a terrible roll. We took two damage to each of the heroes. And that will be the end of our playthrough, potentially. So what I'm going to do, actually, guys, I go back over to the hero board. I don't necessarily want to end it like this, but I will say that we did lose. So let's go ahead and re-roll this time. Let's see what happens if we get lucky. Oof. That is another kill. So even if I had done something like healed myself with a med pack, there just was no good way out of this. We just took too long and we got swarmed. And as you can see, Terminator Genesis Rise of the Resistance is not an easy game. You guys will be seeing links to our other videos popping up. Maybe I'll take another stab at this uh, and see if we can get through this mission or just set up another mission and keep going. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, with our playthroughs here on Dice and Dragons, we don't always come out ahead. I think uh, the game has beat us more times than not on the co-ops. So thank you guys for watching. And don't forget, keep playing games. And like, comment, and subscribe.